Are you wanting to get started with augmented reality, but you don't know where to really start or you don't want to dive into, you know, complex 3D modelers or, you know, get into tools like Unity where it's just way complex or other tools like that, uh, but you don't know where to start and you just want to play around with it a little bit? Well, this solution is a great solution for you, and I'm going to talk about how to build augmented reality with a mobile application, in fact, an iPad application called Adobe Arrow. And we're going to get started with that next. All right, welcome back. If you haven't checked out my website already, go to learningdojo.ninja. You can see blog posts about other uh, topics about augmented reality for learning. You can see blog posts about Storyline and Captivate and also HTML5 and XAPI. So a lot of different content there. But today we're going to focus on augmented reality and especially an iPad application called Adobe Aero or made by Adobe that allows you to build augmented reality experiences right on your iPad. If you're wanting to learn how to create 3D models, you can check out my blog post. I have one on Adobe Dimension, and I also have one on a resource, a website that you can use to find 3D models. We're not gonna cover how to build the 3D models inside here. I'm just gonna get you started. There's a lot that you can do with Adobe Arrow, but this is just kind of scratching the surface. We're just gonna get in and get our, our feet wet a little bit with it. So first of all, you have to download the mobile application. I have my iPad, so you do need an iPad. I have my iPad pulled up here, and I have the mobile application already installed, and I'm logged into my Adobe ID here. So I'm gonna come into Adobe Arrow and I'm going to launch it here. Okay, so I'm logged in and you can log in with an Apple ID, with a Google ID, Adobe ID, whatever you want here. Now I'm gonna come into the left-hand side and if you had a whole Adobe account, you would see all of your files here and you can import Photoshop files inside of here, which is really cool. But down at the bottom left-hand side is create new. Now in order for this to work, I do need to basically create this inside of my augmented reality area. So that means I need to have a flat surface somewhere because you're actually building in the, the real environment here. Now I don't have a lot of space on my desk here. You can see a little bit uh, behind the scenes stuff there. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. But once you have a flat surface, you can go ahead and tap on that. And now you can see the, the, the surface that you're going to be building this content in. Now you can build the content on a flat horizontal surface. You can build it on a wall, on a vertical surface. You can also build it surrounding an anchor. An anchor is a really important part with augmented reality because that's how the mobile experience will build itself around, whether it be an image, like a QR code or something like that, whether it be like a poster, it, it needs to have some type of anchor that's going to trigger the experience. In this case, it's really just gonna look for any type of flat surface. As soon as it recognizes a flat surface, it's going to create this experience for me. So I can create like a, a city, and then that city I can have interactive posts that somebody taps on and they can see more information. If you're trying to create a training with a bird's eye view, like on a campus somewhere, and you wanted somebody to explore the campus, especially in this time during COVID where you know that you can't really physically go places sometimes. And so maybe you want them to just get to know the campus. This would be a great experience to be able to do that. Now, now over on the bottom left-hand side, I can click on these starters, and this will show some different uh, 3D models that are here. You can get started with Sketchfab as well. They have free 3D models. You can also uh, use Adobe Dimensions to create your own custom 3D models without having to go into Maya or Blender or any other complex 3D modeler. Now, over on the left-hand side, you can also go into your Creative Cloud. So if you built a Photoshop file with different layers inside of the Photoshop file, you can actually take that Photoshop file and then split out the layers and make them three-dimensional. And that could be like your background, which somebody walks through and explores different things inside of your background. Or you can just grab an image from your iPad. So if you've taken a picture of an office or something like that, you can just grab it from here and it could display that. I'm gonna go into the starter images because I don't have any 3D models right now. Again, if you wanna check out the 3D models, go to my website and you can see blogs on how to do that part of it. I'm gonna go into the toy model display and this is an example of the Photoshop file and this is going to be my background here. So I'm gonna just tap on that and it's going to create that, um, 
that Photoshop file. So first of all, you have to tap to place that. And you can use the trackpad if you're connected with like a, a trackpad on your iPad here, or you can use a mouse if you connected it through Bluetooth. But I'm gonna select that and I'm going to move it in the three dimension. Now it's gonna keep it along the vertical plane. It's gonna keep it along this flat surface here, so keep that in mind. Now if I use two fingers, I can just rotate it, I can make it grow, I can make it uh, shorter as well. But you'll notice as I start to rotate it a little bit, there's this three dimension of uh, Photoshop layers. If I wanted to, I could actually come in here and tap on where it says layers down at the bottom, and then I can actually take the Z asset and I can extend those a little bit as well. So you can see now there's more depth to it. So if you create something inside of Photoshop that has layers, you could go in and expand those layers out and then somebody can walk through your experience as well. So really cool to be able to use your Photoshop skills with augmented reality here. So that's good enough for now. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. Well, let's make it a little bit bigger and we're going to create or import a 3D model. Whether I grabbed this from Sketchfab, whether I created this myself inside of Adobe Dimension or Maya, it doesn't matter. You just need to be able to import it. So I'm gonna go into the toy display here and I'm going to import that, that toy. Now this toy, if you built it inside of something, I'm gonna to tap to place it first of all, and then I can move it around here. I can rotate it, make it bigger as well. But if you built it in something like Maya or Blender, or if you got it from Sketchfab and it has some animations associated with it, you can trigger those animations inside of here. If it doesn't have those animations, you can still animate, like you can move it inside of Adobe Arrow here, but it's not as like, you know, you don't have the different parts on your arm moving or animated, like the facial expressions animated or something like that. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, once you have it placed here, you can tap on that and then you can go down to the bottom here and you can move it with your controls down here. You can scale it or you can add behaviors. If you add behaviors, you can add triggers to this, this interaction, this um, model. Now, if I, if I built like a plane of like grass down at the bottom or if I built like a city, I can kind of build all this and make it a lot more complex. But in this case, I'm just gonna have this toy model here, go into my trigger and the different types of triggers are going to be start when the scene automatically starts or it's gonna be tap when somebody taps on this uh, model or it's going to be enter proximity when the iPad itself gets close to that object is going to trigger this behavior. So that's the first thing is what's going to trigger that? What is the event here? I'm gonna do tap for now. And then the next thing is action. Now action, there's a lot that we can do here. So we can do like play animation. So if there's already an animation associated with that object, you can play that. It, you can do play images. So you can have several images come. You can do play audio. So if you wanted to have some audio playing in the background, you can move along a path. And so if you created a path, you can trigger it to move along that path. So you can have like little men going across or women going across the table and um, just rotating or kind of moving like amongst the city or something like that. You can spin it, bounce it, aim it, show it, move it scale it if you wanted to grow when somebody taps on it rotate it orbit it around something like i've done like planes going around buildings and stuff you can have something follow you which is creepy but you can have something follow you and so if, as you move around it's just going to keep looking at you again that's creepy to me but you can have a wait for a little while and then do something else so i'm going to just select bounce here and then i can adjust um, what the bounce is going to be if i wanted to be more bounce, if I wanted it to be less bounce, I could do that as well. Now, if I hit play, you're gonna see exactly what that bounce is. And that kind of went way off screen here. Let's just dial that back a little bit more. Probably not negative there. Let's do that. Hit play again. That was still quite a bit. Okay, looks like I need to dial it back. I mean, it was just way off there still. Okay, there we go. So that, I mean, it's still, if I'm back a little bit more, this would be just perfect. And I'm gonna hit uh, the check mark down at the bottom. Now you can sequence these actions. So you can have a bounce and then you can have it do something else. If you wanted to trigger another object as well. So if I come into action and that, let's say I wanted to play an audio file, I can have it play an audio file as well. Now I just need to import that audio file 
So grab a folder and go locate that audio file and then bring it in. But for now, I'm going to hit delete. I don't want that. I'm just going to hit OK there. And for now, we're just going to bounce. In fact, I want to come down here and hit delete down at the bottom so we get rid of that action completely. To preview this and see what the full experience is going to be like, you come up to the top and this is now going to preview it. Adobe Aero does allow you to take pictures of your experience. It allows you to hit record so you can share it with somebody as well. But now I can interact with the content exactly how a learner would interact with it. So if I tap on it, you can see there's my bounce and I can follow that along. That's just a simplistic example of how to take objects and put them inside of Adobe Arrow and how to start animating them and adding these different behaviors to, you know, if I get close to an object that does a bounce then. And this allows you to create these learning experience that gives the learner a bird's eye view of something or to see something that they normally don't see in real life or to uh, if you create an image anchor. So if I go back into edit here, over on the right hand side, you have this anchor icon. So instead of the vertical anchor, like the surface anchor, I can go image and I can bring in an image. So when they scan the image, they can learn more about people uh, and different what their position is and allows them to explore different things. So there's a lot of possibility, especially in the learning realm for augmented reality. And hopefully this just gets you started and you can test things out. You can prototype things here and you can share them with people as well. So if I come over to the top right hand side and I click on share, I can record a video and share it with people. I can share a link. So they just have to tap on a link and share it or I can click on export and export it as a USDZ file, which means that anybody with an iOS device can open that up or export it as a .real file so it can be imported into other Adobe applications as well. Now, unfortunately, this is only for iOS at the moment. I know they're working on some Android uh, version of it as well, but for now, this at least gets us started and people with iOS devices can check it out. I'm hoping the Android version comes really soon. I'm an iOS guy myself, so I'm not sad about it right now, but at least I'm hoping that comes soon so more people can use it. But this is a great way just to get your feet wet and uh, running up and running with um, Adobe Arrow. So hopefully it was useful for you. Check out my website, learningdojo.ninja. You can check out other blog posts about augmented reality, about Storyline, about XAPI as well. If you have any suggestions, let me know. And if you like this video, go ahead and click on the like button and subscribe to my channel and come back here weekly to see more blog posts about anything learning development. So thanks everyone for checking out this video.